Okay, it's Buck at Bacon Trees. Thanks for dropping by, or clicking by, or stopping by. Uh, anyway, I wanted to discuss um, one issue about uh, equalizing a sound system. Now, um, since I posted my video in 2011, I think it was 2011, I was using analog mixers at the time, and um, since then there have been a lot of digital mixers. And recently I got a comment, which was a good comment actually, because it kind of updates the situation. I'll post the name uh, below of the person, um, just in case they're watching. But um, they basically stated that the equalizing with a 31 band EQ was irrelevant because you could use um, parametric EQs, which you totally can. And I did that on one Yamaha mixer at a church. I used the uh, PEQ rather and the GEQ at the same time. And the only reason I used the PEQ was because the GEQ was limited to something like eight, eight, 10 decisions, something like that. I think it was like eight decisions of cutting with subtractive EQ. And the rest were, were narrow bend with cuts. So that was fine. It, it totally makes sense to uh, use whatever tools you have at the time. So if you have a PEQ on your digital mixer, use that to cut the feedback frequencies. Now, the one misconception here, which is we could discuss this, it's arguable, I'm sure, but when, um, when feedback happens, it's exponential, meaning it'll not happen. You turn up the sound system, it starts simmering. You like my hand gestures? <laughs> and then when you turn up just a little more, it just spikes, and that's exponential. It just takes off certain frequencies that uh, recycle themselves through the microphone speaker system as a feedback loop. So if you take down... Um, EQ bands, like 31 band EQ bands, just a little bit, you're going to stop that exponential rise in feedback. So I'm not talking about drastic cuts. Now, using a parametric EQ um, suggests drastic cuts, like notch filtering, which is fine if it works. Um, but with the 31 band EQ, don't forget that every center frequency has a 23.2% bandwidth. And if you use a combining type EQ system where you're getting a little bit more dipping in between the bands, like if you take two bands down half as much as you would take one band down to correct a problem in the middle, um, well, that you're actually taking out a little more in between the two bands. The first two frequency bands that feed back in 85 to 90% of every sound system I've worked on is between one and two kilohertz. Sure, there's science reasons for it, but uh, that's just the fact. And the next ones that happen might be like, um, you know, with a, a good sub, maybe 40 hertz, 50 hertz, something like that. So I'll take that out. Anyways, I have had great success taking out feedback frequencies with a graphic EQ. If I had a parametric EQ at every show, I might try that too. I guess the point is, it doesn't really matter which equalizer you use as long as you use your equalizers to correct problems in the sound system, number one, including feedback, because going back to a previous video, which uh, I posted and I got the um, I got the, some of this information from the handbook for sound engineers, was four questions you must ask for evaluating any sound system. Uh, number one, is it loud enough? Number two, can everybody hear? Number three, will it? Um, can everybody understand? And number four, will it feed back? So really, when you boil it down, you just answer those four questions: yes, 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 and no, and you're good. So it really doesn't matter because uh, as long as you get rid of the problems and people walk in and they hear a great show and they're not doing this and they're not looking at the soundboard, you know, seeing who's mixing and having problems, then you're good. So. Um, the comment that was posted is totally valid. I don't think it's irrelevant. I think that was the wrong term to use. Um, but, you know, but then there was a rebuttal and whatever, and I, I guess we figured it out. So I do welcome those kind of comments because it really does open up a dialogue uh, discussion because nobody agrees 100% on how to equalize a sound system. So my methods are just the methods that I've developed over the years um, borrowing from other people sometimes and staying away from other people. Like just kind of taking the best of what I thought was going to work, answering those four questions. And as long as you get a loud, clear sound and nobody's ears are bleeding, I think it's a good mix because it is not rocket science and we're not flying planes close to mountains. It's live sound. Don't make people deaf. 
let people have a good show, make it sound loud and clear. However you use the equalizers and gain structure, that's up to you as long as you get a good sounding show. Anyways, thank you for clicking, stopping by, watching. I'm getting cold because my car is off and I'm going <laughs> to go upstairs now. All right, cheers. Where is the off button? Oh, I got a remote. Here it goes. Thank you.